folks, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. Of course, we're at the Bell uh, Light Box. It is Hot Docs. There are some great documentaries going on, but there's one that probably stands out for a lot of people when they see the title of it. I don't know if I should say the title because I think it would be better if you say it because both of you are in this great documentary. Assholes a Theory. Wow, that's a statement. Um, let's try to explain to folks, though, what this is, because, you know, when you first hear about this and you hear about certain people who are in this documentary, you might think, oh, it's comedy, it's got to be funny or something like that. Not really. I look at it as, quote, unquote, man in the mirror kind of thing. Yeah, so it's actually quite serious, but it's tongue-in-cheek, right? It's a delightful combination of sort of tongue-in-cheek humor on the one hand, but serious subject treated quite seriously on the other hand. How did first the both of you get involved with this? Please explain, and of course explain your backgrounds also. Oh, sure, I'm a retired RCMP officer and I had 20 years in the RCMP and I experienced workplace bullying, which I would refer to now as uh, dealing with some assholes. Not, not everyone was like that, but enough to make it be a very uh, traumatic uh, 20 years. And I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. John found me through my TED talk on, uh, I did the t a TED talk on tools to survive workplace bullying, because having survived, I wanted to share those lessons so that other people didn't have to suffer like I did. And this, this, uh, this documentary by, uh, based on the book by Aaron James was a par is a powerful tool that everybody can keep the conversation about how da damaging assholes can be, not only in our private lives, but in public spaces and in our governments. And of course yourself. Yeah, so um, I'm, Aaron and I go back a long ways, and uh, so we're, we're both academics. And so the way I got involved in this whole bit is I invited Aaron to join a panel discussion that I was holding over at the Cornell Law School on something I'm calling asshole proof governance systems. And I had been talking with Aaron for a while about that, uh, and then when he came out with the book, it made him sort of an, you know, the authority on the subject itself. So Aaron and a number of other panelists uh, were part of this wonderful discussion, and John uh, was working with Aaron already on putting a film together in connection with the book, and asked if he could film some of the proceedings of this conference that we were holding. Um, and then he ended up hanging around Cornell a bit longer, and we so spent a lot of time talking, and then the three of us, Aaron and John and I, went over to Wall Street to do more talking over at Wall Street, all on camera, of course. And uh, so we've been sort of going on and on with this for a while now. So I'm going to ask you, what exactly is an asshole? Definition of that. Yeah, so Aaron has a sort of canonical definition that he's worked out on this that I think is just perfect. But it's essentially the idea, it's where somebody sort of entitles him or herself relative to other people and has a sense of sort of entrenched entitlement, which, as Aaron says, immunizes the person against criticism from others. The person thinks that he or she literally deserves more than other people and hence isn't particularly moved by complaints on the part of others that you're treating them unequally or that you're privileg priv privileging yourself relative to them because they think that they actually deserve the privileges that they're receiving. And that sort of self-entrenched bit, that sort of entrenched sense of entitlement that immunizes yourself against criticism is sort of the core definition that Aaron gives in the book. And I think that's spot on. I think it gets to the core of it. In this documentary, though, we go into so many different aspects of assholes. Um, regular people, celebrities, we look at Hollywood, we look at different countries. We even look at Canadians. So I'm going to ask you, how are Canadians doing? Are we on high on that asshole list? Well, so uh, as a non-Canadian, I might be sort of fit to say something. So I, 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 sort, of, I sort of joked with the audience earlier that um, um, I thought it was particularly fitting that a Canadian filmmaker was making the film. Uh, when I was uh, back, at, when I was a teenager, uh, I tended to sort of defend people who were being picked on. And I remember one time I was defending one guy who was being picked on by a bunch of bullies. And this fellow I, I defended said, oh, thank you, Robert, you're the Canada of people. So I've always thought of Canada as the kind of the anti-asshole country. Sort of relative, sort of relatedly, I tend to think of the United States as Canada if they were assholes. Right? We're like we're like the asshole version of Canada, and so I think of Canada as the sort of purer, the more sort of morally clean version of America. Um, that's probably unfair to both countries in a sense, but in rough and ready terms, it kind of feels right. You know, we can you know joke around and stuff. What happened to you wasn't funny at all. Um, I wanted you to talk a little bit about this, please, because as we talked about Canada, this is something that happened in Canada with, with people that we are supposed to look for protection from, and you did not get that. Well, it's, it's, it's uh, the assholes, 
really thought that they had a right to behave a certain way and that your voice, my voice didn't count. And so they, they, there was, uh, and then there was the power imbalance or perceived power imbalance where you are lower than me, your rank is lower than me, you have no right to speak up and I have every right to abuse you and, and do whatever I want and say whatever I want. And there was no accountability. And the message from when there's an asshole in the le in leadership whether it's in, in, in the workplace, at like one detachment or in the entire organization, if the bully, the asshole is a leader, then that ripples through all of management, right down to the, the employees who are at the bottom, the bottom rank, and that this is a bullying organization and anyone considered the other, and that can be anybody, is it's fair game on you. And nobody's there to protect you because nobody wants to be seen to be siding with the other because then they become a target as well. So the and it wears down it wears you down slowly. It's just chip 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 away at your self esteem when you're dealing with assholes in the workplace. That eventually you just can't even think that you are worth living. And it a lot of people don't get that that second opportunity to to step back from that abyss of despair. And I think it's really important that we talk about how assholes have tremendous impact on society and how they can they damage people. And in many cases, it's it's too late. The, the damage is irreparable, and you, you can't, they can't be fixed. But you found the formula in dealing with assholes, speaking up and holding your ground. Absolutely, speaking up has been part of it. But I'll tell you, it took a while before I found my voice. And now that I have found my voice, um, I'm never, I'm never going to stop speaking up for other people who are trying to find their voice and sharing the lessons and the tools and strategies that I use to survive, to find happiness and find a sense of peace with life, taking the, taking the lessons and not the pain to move forward. And I think when you're dealing with assholes, you're challenged every day. So is your definition different for the word asshole than, say, your colleagues? No, no, it's just my experiences are different. My experiences are different, but he's absolutely right in the definition of an asshole. Yeah. Okay, well, look, folks, I got to say, I hope people come out and get a chance to see this. I think it is funny, it's moving, and I also hope that the folks who may not think of themselves as assholes <laughs> may want to take that look in the mirror one more time. We'll especially see her story because this was so profoundly moving. I mean, I was actually worried I wouldn't be able to talk about this film in the Q&A afterwards because I was kind of losing it, right? I was, I was tearing up because her story was so powerful, so moving. I think everybody ought to see this story, right? We were, a lot of us talk about assholes and what to do about it. She actually did it. It's incredible. She's really a national hero. I think a continental hero. Let's say all of North America, she's a hero. Absolutely agree. Folks, thank you so much for this interview and thank you for taking part in such a great documentary. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you. It's so great.